So let's speak a little bit about how hard is it to compute a Nash equilibrium in a normal form game. This is an involved topic and I'll just give you a, a taste for it. Let me draw your attention to two specific algorithms for computing a sample Nash equilibrium in a game. These are two out of a, a long line of algorithms that have been investigated and these are sort of two extreme. The one of them starts with a mathematical formulation of the problem called a linear complementarity problem. And uh, you want to set it up as a mathematical optimization problem. You can apply various algorithms to that. And the most famous one for two players uh, nat uh, games is due to Lemke and Halsey. And this is an algorithm that um, really um, displays a deep understanding of the mathematical structure of uh, what a game is and the nature of Nash equilibria. On perhaps the other extreme is uh, what is called uh, the support enumeration method, a, um, a, uh, a recent uh, procedure that doesn't have as deep an insight into the structure of the problem. It says simply the following, it says, if you fix the support of the uh, uh, strategies of the player and the supports of the strategy players are those actions that are played with non-zero probability, if you fix that support, then the problem becomes very easy. You can set it up as a linear program and solve it efficiently. And um, that would be the end of it if it weren't for the uh, case that, that, that indeed there are an exponential number of supports to explore. And so um, the trick in this procedure is to explore them cleverly using clever heuristics. And uh, that's the, called the support enumeration. There's a clever heuristic for, for how to uh, enumerate those supports and check them one by one. Uh, although the, the latter procedure is not as uh, smart or as insightful as the lemke hausen uh, it turns out that in practice, uh, it tends to uh, uh, run very fast. So we've seen the algorithm. People have tried very hard to find algorithms uh, computing a sample Nash equilibrium. Um, and it does seem hard. The question is, can we somehow uh, capture that formally within uh, the complexity hierarchy? And... Um, and um, and for that, we need to introduce some new, new, uh, new concepts. Uh, the essential concept is that of the new class of problems called PPAD for polynomial parity arguments uh, on directed graphs introduced uh, by Christos Papadimitri in 1994. Uh, we won't go into detail, but just so you know the chronology, uh, PPAD is a specialization of a class called TFNP, which is in turn was a specialization of a problem called FNP. Uh, going in detail here is, is, is beyond the scope of, of uh, what uh, we want to speak about, but uh, it does help us now position uh, uh, the complexity of finding a sample Nash equilibrium in the complexity hierarchy. And again, we have uh, the class of polynomial time uh, problems of problem that can be verified in polynomial time with these being the hardest among them. And given that, PPAD turns out to reside somewhere within this class. Now again, we don't know whether this uh, entire class does not collapse and all become one and the same. It's widely believed that it does not, but uh, proof doesn't exist. However, uh, we do know that PPAD lies someplace in between P and NP. Now, what does that have to do with uh, the problem of computing a Nash equilibrium? Well, that's where the, the following theorems come in. Uh, originally, it was shown that the problem of computing a Nash equilibrium is complete for this class PPAD. That is, it's the hardest among all problems in that class initially proved for four players, then for th all four games with three or more players, and then finally in 06 for all, all, all class of games. 
And so we uh, widely believe that the problem is not polynomial, cannot prove it, but we do know where it resides within the complexity hierarchy that we are familiar with.